This is an Edwards SIGA 270 addressable pull station. In contrast with conventional pull stations, which just contain a simple, normally open switch, addressable pulls like this contain an electronic module which allows the panel to identify exactly which device has been activated. Electronically address systems have existed since the 1980s, but a much older system of point identification predates them by many decades, and that's the coded pull station system. So say hello to my standard electric model BC-1250, originally manufactured by Edwards just like the SIGA-270. I believe the original model on this was 1250-0. This is an example of a coded pull station. They're often designed to look like larger versions of common pull stations like the Chevron and the aforementioned 270 series. You can see the comparison right here, how much larger this device is. But what they essentially are is a scaled-down version of the municipal telegraph systems like the ones you'll see in Boston, Massachusetts. These systems indicate their address mechanically through the use of a clockwork mechanism, which you can see here. This code wheel has teeth which open and close this set of contacts as the wheel turns until the mechanism stops after four cycles. This one's code is 3-4. You can see that here, there's three teeth, then four teeth. And right here is the tag showing the pull station's address. Now for street boxes, the output is typically a ticker tape, which actually, it's a paper tape that a metal piece punches out the code onto, and like a wind-up gong. I'm not sure exactly how they work, but there's like these types of gongs that you actually have to wind up for them to work, even though they're controlled electrically. And the pattern would give the fire department the alarm's location within the city. For coded pull stations, however, the output is the building's own notification appliances, telling the occupants to leave and giving the on-site security personnel the address within the building. There's also this test switch right here, which can be pushed in this direction for a silent test, so you can test the mechanism without sounding the signals, or the alarm test, which tests the signals without having to actuate the mechanism. Unlike their larger scale cousins, which must be wound manually with a key, coded pull stations are typically self-winding, so pulling the lever would wind the mechanism, we'll wind it up now, and then releasing it will set it in motion. It's quite noisy, and almost reminds me of those old accounting calculators with the printers. So we'll watch this clockwork mechanism go. Code wheel. Now notice that these are actually two separate switches, one for the code wheel and one for the test switch. I find that pretty interesting. Watch the whirly spinny things. So this will run for four cycles and then stop. stopped. So now that that code has finished, I'll show you the inside. The pull station opens with a screwdriver, just like the smaller 270 series, and the terminals are located behind this piece of plastic. There's a warning not to insert wires through this hole. So the contacts on this model are normally closed, meaning that the circuit is broken with each pulse of the code wheel. The control panel these were connected to would then invert the signal so that the notification circuit closes each time the initiating circuit opens. This may actually be a crude form of supervision since you could have a steady light to indicate a trouble condition and if you were using anything other than single stroke bells so the signals would just sound continuously if a pull station were to become disconnected from the system. Close that back up. Now some models actually have normally closed and normally open contacts, but mine doesn't, so I had to use this cheap ice cube relay right here. See that right here? It has Form C contacts for both normally open and normally closed, so I could pulse the horns correctly. Here is a diagram of how I accomplished this.
There were also coated pull stations driven by electric motors, which used a larger sized conventional pull station with a switch to activate the motor. The handle would lock into place and it would have to be reset like a normal pull station. And then you'd have to typically turn a key in order to reset the motor mechanism because that thing would automatically stop after four cycles just like the mechanical version. The YouTube user Kaysin556 actually has some videos demonstrating these, which I will link in the description. Though certainly possible from a technological standpoint, I don't know of any motor-coated smoke detectors. But with all that out of the way, now we're going to test the pulse station with a variety of different devices. Alright, that's about it for this week. I hope you enjoyed that foray into the earliest of addressable technologies. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And if you like ringing bells so much, don't forget to ring that little notification bell. Alright, see you next time.